Okay, let's get right into it. Let's go ahead and install Wireshark. I'm gonna go to Wireshark.org. Gonna click on download. And we want the 64 bit. And by the way, I'm on my virtual machine. And we will open when done. We will agree since we don't have a choice. Click on next. Click next. Next. This is when PCAP. We do need that. Click on next. And we do not want to install USB cap. Click on next to install one PCAP. And finish. Next. Let's go ahead and run it. Finish. Okay, we are now at the main screen of Wireshark. This is it. So the front page will list all the different adapters that your machine is connected to. My virtual machine, which I am on right now, has Ethernet Zero as its adapter. It's a virtual adapter. But this is where everything from the network comes into, into my virtual machine. In order to capture data that are hitting this adapter, I have two options. I can double click on the adapter or I can simply click on capture because it is highlighted already and I can hit on start. There's actually three ways or I can hit this start button here. And the capture begins. And would you look at that? So anything that's coming to my adapter, we are capturing. In order to stop capturing, I'm going to click on the stop button right here. And look at all that packet that we've captured. So we can see everything that's hidden in our adapter from here. Let's see what IP address I am on. I'm going to type in CMD for the command prompt. Press enter and we'll type in IP config. And it says I'm on the 192.168.0.31 IP address. As you can see, my IP address is right there. And it tells me my destination IP address for this packet specifically is 192.168.0.15. If it cannot find the IP address, it will go down to a lower layer, which will be the device's MAC address. Sometimes if the MAC address is a popular MAC address, such as the Samsung here, it will identify the manufacturer. One protocol I want to make mention of is a protocol that I talked about in the last video, which was HTTP. If you remember, I said HTTP comes on two different ports, either port 80 or port 443. HTTP works with the web browser. So for instance, when I open up Google Chrome, this web page comes because of the HTTP protocol. And you can see it right here, HTTPS. So that is what that protocol does. It listens on either port 80 or port 443. If it's HTTP, it means that the data that is being sent back and forth will not be encrypted. However, HTTPS, the S is for secure. You can see here, it indicates that this is a secure website. This means that any transaction that takes place between my computer and the Wireshark server is being encrypted. So if someone were to capture our packets in between, they will not be able to decipher what it is because of the encryption. Let's go ahead and capture a packet that uses HTTP. So go ahead and start a new capture. We're going to say continue without saving, start fresh. We'll go to our browser and I'm going to type in hackthissite.com. This is a website that they're wide open and they basically tell you to go ahead and hack them. I'm going to type in something in the search engine. We're going to say, Paul is the man. Enter. Just fooling around with it to see if we can actually see that packet. All right. So let's go back to our Wireshark and we're going to stop the capture. Let's see if we can find a data packet that shows the search that I just entered on that website. I'm going to find it by filtering the protocols. I'm going to just sort them out by protocol names. And I'm going to go looking for HTTP. 
All right, so let's see, HTTP. Ah, here it is. You see that right there? It's under the info section. Paul is the man. So that's the packet of interest for this scenario. If I right click on this packet and I click on follow TCP stream, it will show me the entire stream. Basically, this is the transaction that took place when I hit that search engine. You can see right there, Paul is the man, right? You can see the associated token because it is not encrypted. The pink displays my transaction and the blue shows hack the site websites transactions. And there's all sorts of information that you can find on here. It all depends on what it is that you're looking for when you're using Wireshark. Go ahead and close this window out. On the main page, see if you can find a three-way handshake. In the next video, I'm gonna show you where it is. Stay tuned.